Hey everyone, welcome to a topic that I'm extremely excited to talk about. It's something I've been looking forward to testing out, getting my hands on, and creating content around. It just has been a matter of time of me finding the right hardware and buying it and getting it in my hands, right? And I finally have. I have an absolutely amazing G-Sync monitor that I am very satisfied with, for sure. I'll show you later in the video what it is. But yes, G-Sync and Shmup Arch together are a force to be reckoned with. If you are of someone who is enthusiastic about top quality emulation and stuff like that, invest in this because this is going to be pretty mind blowing and it, I think it's honestly the future where everyone should be pushing towards. And so, and there's still a lot more room of things I would love to see happen, but this is the peak of emulation I feel at right now. I know the groovy main boys aren't going to be happy to hear that, but until they show me something really compelling otherwise, because I do have some groovy main footage in this video, Shmup Arch with G-Sync on is absurd. So let's just talk about my monitor and what is G-Sync and then we'll go over the chart I made here. And all the footage you see here is taken, you know, with G-Sync on and stuff like that. So this is the G-Sync monitor that I got. You obviously don't have to pick the same one, and I know there's also FreeSync, so there's two types of options. G-Sync is the more expensive proprietary one to NVIDIA graphics cards, and FreeSync is going to be probably the more widely used open source one that most of you will probably be more interested in getting. But the reason why I went with G-Sync is because, from my understanding, and I'm sure this might cause some controversy because it's not 100% clear, but there are some indications that G-Sync works better at lower frame rates, so it works a little better at 60 FPS, 50 FPS, and stuff like that, which is where a lot of shmups run. Whereas FreeSync and G-Sync are basically indistinguishable at higher frame rates, so most gamers would probably not care. But if you're trying to emulate classic games and stuff like that with this thing, I think G-Sync seems to be the better of the two, that's why I went with it. And also because my graphics card supports G-Sync, so... I didn't have any issues with having to buy a new graphics card or anything like that. So that's this is the monitor that I got, the Asus. And what I want to show you, this website is absolutely phenomenal. If you're ever looking into buying a monitor, do your best to see if it's reviewed on this website because it goes ham. They give you all the information with all kinds of different stuff. But my favorite section is right here, the input lag and sync section. Because it tells you, oh it has G-Sync or it has a free sync, whatever it is and also tells you the different types of input lag that it has at different resolutions. So the one that we're most interested in is this number right here, native resolution at 60 FPS. So this is what you're mostly going to be doing when you're emulating shmups. 11.8 ms, that's about a little over half a frame. Most monitors are about that. Uh, the monitor I had previous, another Asus, was actually a little bit lower, but it did not have G-Sync. And so when it comes to input lag, I'm going to show you in this chart that it's much better to invest, you know, with a few extra milliseconds in a G-Sync monitor than a non-G-Sync monitor that's a few milliseconds faster because overall those the G-Sync is going to definitely make up for any kind of thing there. I'd say though when you're in the market for a G-Sync monitor, I'd consider 12 about the threshold. If you see 12.5, 13 above, I'd look to find a different monitor. This is basically what I consider the threshold of worth your time. That's just my opinion, of course. I'm more strict about this sort of thing. But another thing I want to point out here is the native resolution at 4.4 ms. This is something I've been talking about and I want to explain this even further. I think indie devs should really, really start considering making their games 120 FPS or higher frame rate compatible because it is the future of this genre. It's the direction the genre needs to go for a lot of reasons. One is you are chopping that input lag in half. So now, if you're playing Zero Ranger at 120 FPS, you you have cut the input lag down in half, which in that game already has low input lag. But what's also really amazing is that the screen scrolling, it's hard to explain, and you're not gonna get that as much with your shmup emulation, because most shmups don't emulate at 120 FPS obviously, but when you play other games and games that are compatible with higher frame rates, the scrolling of the screen and the bullets, all those types of things is so smooth and clean 
it's you know it's like once you see it you don't go back where everyone said oh 4k is a joke 4k doesn't matter then you see 4k and you're like okay 4, 4k is actually legit that's how it is with this higher frame rate stuff so i think as shmup players fighting game players hardcore gamers you all need to start considering you know looking into this you don't have to buy it right away but it's definitely something to start looking into and not dismissing so anyway so i got my hands on the free sync or the g my g sync monitor and i was so excited because what's really cool about shmup arch specifically as opposed to mame and stuff like that is it supports g sync it has settings to support it and man does it deliver so I want to go over why it does G-Sync matter, what is it, because I think this is always kind of complicated for a lot of people to even understand, and I don't want to make this just some buzzword type stuff. So I, I made this little chart thing here. I'm not the greatest chart maker on earth, so if you all want to make fun of my chart, whatever, but this is just to kind of show you the different variables that go on when it comes to uh, sync on different types of screens and different settings, and how input lag is affected by this. So I made a little key here, X, that's the input of your controller, so let's say fire, right? So X is you firing a, bu a button. Plus, that is the frame rate of the game, which is different than these numbers. So the pluses here, these are, this is obviously just representational. Don't take this literally, right? This is just representational. So let's say the pluses are the frame rates of the game. So for instance, Dodonpachi does not actually run at 60 fps it runs at like 57 or something like that so the 57 frame rate are these pluses that's the frame rate within the game and then you have t that's screen tear so we'll get into that when you talk about no vsync then s is it is shown on screen so as you can already see there are a lot of different variables going on whenever it comes to syncing screens and games and inputs basically have all these different factors and for them to all line up correctly, there's different methods that have been used in the past. The most common method, and the method you all are probably using or have used, it's pretty much forced on consoles and stuff like that, is vertical sync. And what vertical sync does is that it holds certain aspects of the uh, data to for them to line up. So in each one, the ideal scenario is that all the factors line up and I'm just saying in this first example they all line up right so the in-game frame rate is on the input is happening on that frame and it also matches up with the frame that the mo your monitor refreshes and so when all of those line up and the S is that it is shown on screen that's when you basically get the perfect scenario no extra lag no screen tearing everything's lined up however with you know with games and stuff all these factors are not working at the same time for uh, up until g-sync so for regular monitors your your in-game frame rate and your monitor frame rate are not lining up with each other perfectly especially with older games where they don't have perfect F 60 fps frame rates right so you've got let's say right here you've got your dodonpachi frame right here then you got your screen here and you can see they're kind of out of sync and then you had your input registered back here. So with VSync, what it does is it holds that input, it holds the game, and it holds everything, and then it displays them a frame later here on your monitor. So there's this buffer, this frame buffer, that holds everything and then delivers it for you on your frame. The consequence of VSync is that you don't have any screen tearing or weirdness going on visually but internally there is this frame that the game that your computer or whatever is holding on to constantly so you have an extra frame of lag just whenever you turn vsync on you immediately have an extra frame of lag when you turn it off you lose that frame this is cl consistently clear across all my testing this always happens you can literally just turn it on you gain a frame of lag you turn it off you lose that frame because it's holding everything and lining them up for you However, up until this point, you know, I didn't like that. So I always play with VSync off. And so I've always been playing with VSync off. And what VSync, turning VSync off does is that it gets rid of that buffer so that it won't hold this for that frame anymore. So let's say everything lines up. So on the uh, ideal scenario of everything lines up, 
there is no screen tearing or anything, but most of the time not everything's going to line up. So what happens? You hit your input here. Let's say your game refresh is here. So the Dodonpachi is refreshing here. You shoot. The game's refreshing here. And then your screen's refreshing here. What's going to happen is your screen will display it as soon as it refreshes. There's no buffer. But since everything's not all lined up, it'll tear the screen. And so that's where screen tearing comes from. And so as you can see, there's another examples. So in scenarios, if they all line up, you won't get a screen tear like this. But for the most part, they're not going to be lining up correctly. So you're going to get pretty consistent screen tearing for the most part. Some games tear more than others because they line up better. Like a 60 FPS game is usually going to tear less than something like Donanpachi or other games where their frame rates are funky. So that's uh, v no V-Sync. So the, the trade-off was that you accepted the tearing, but you lost a frame of lag. And now let's talk about G-Sync, which is actually really, really interesting. And whenever you guys read online about the wonders of Groovy Mame, it's because G-Sync and Groovy Mame are essentially the same thing. It's just Groovy Mame works on CRTs and G-Sync works on modern displays, right? But what it is, is that what's happening is that your monitor and your computer are talking to each other and they are lining their frame rates up together. So your monitor is going to change its refresh rates along with the game's refresh rates. So that makes it really, really good because these two, as you can see, these two rows where before they're always kind of weirdly out of sync. Now they will be constantly synced together at all times. So now it just comes down to a matter of where the input lands and where the screen refreshes. And so this is why it is much better to have a little bit of extra milliseconds of lag on your G-Sync monitor, like 2 MS, right? Than to have that 9 on your non-G-Sync monitor. Because the trade-off is you're going to have a very consistent lag experience. They're not going to be a lot of variation. It's just going to be consistent, and that actually feels much better than on previous monitors where there's always that kind of jumps where sometimes there's less lag, sometimes there's more lag. And so this is why G-Sync is really, really good. It's because it lines these up and pro provides you with just a more consistent and less laggy experience than especially V-Sync, which is holding frames and buffering stuff. But even with, with screen tearing, even with non-G-Sync monitors with screen tearing off, I still would say it is better because, remember, even though the screen tearing, there's no buffer, these still are not lined up. This and this are still not lined up together. So there is still some sort of variation there with your lag. But with this, they are lined up together. So the lag is going to be much more consistent. And you can feel that when you play. It feels really good. It feels like the game is just solid. It's hard to explain, but the game feels extremely solid and predictable. Yeah, so absolutely love G-Sync. And another really nice benefit benefit of G-Sync is there is no screen tearing, but there is no buffering. So nothing's getting buffered, so there's no extra lag, but there is no screen tearing either because everything is just lining up. All these factors are lining up every time. And so different, different programs work with G-Sync better than others. I played some different games where there was still some screen tearing, but on Shmup Arch, which has been programmed to take advantage of G-Sync fully, there is no screen tearing. It's absolutely amazing. And so it is basically the definitive way to play these games. And I have footage of DOJ, which up until this point on Shmup Arch was always kind of a bit of an issue because of the screen tearing. That For whatever reason, that game had a lot of tearing going on. And so I was always like trying to figure out how to reduce that down. But if you have G-Sync, that's no longer an issue. It plays just like the PGM looks, but, you know, and at a higher resolution. That's the other really cool thing about this that gives it, in my opinion, an edge over, like, Groovy Mame and even original hardware is that the resolution is just so much higher. You know, 1440p resolution. I actually had to shrink down the resolution for the video capture you see here, but... When you see these games in really high resolution, but there's no extra lag, 
and the you know they feel so consistent this is just mind-blowing it i was absolutely blown away a hundred one hundred percent worth the investment because another really good thing about this and let me pull this up on my uh display here Another really cool thing about this is that you can set up G-Sync for windowed and full screen mode. This is really good because now when you play game, when you play stuff like Groovy Mame and you play certain shmups that don't have what's called the true exclusive full screen, you're not being forced to put V-Sync on them anymore because now G-Sync is taken over and G-Sync is making the rules and so this gets rid of that whole issue that, you know, gamers and gamers have always had with windowed games on Windows 10, right? Where Windows 10 enforces VSync on stuff if they're not true full full screen. But now it doesn't because G-Sync has taken over and overrided all that stuff. And so absolutely turn the setting on. It's just, this is a game changer. I feel like it's one of those things where you don't understand how good it is until you use it and it's really easy once you get the you know you get your graphics card you just go into your Nvidia settings you get your you make sure you have your G-Sync monitor FreeSync monitor obviously enable it and you're good to go you know it's that simple and so and most modern graphics cards most people have Nvidia cards I would say so more than likely you probably can use G-Sync but if you have an AMD card I mean at least try FreeSync then FreeSync's cheaper and I think I haven't tested it personally, but I've heard you know it's it's really solid as well. My only concern is that the lower frame rates, how to how it works, if it works well or not. I've heard kind of conflicting reports that some people say, oh, it'll work up to 45, and some people say it won't work unless it's exactly 60 or higher. So that's why I like G-Sync because I know it will work at crazy low frame rates. And so, anyway. Thanks so much for tuning into the video. If you have any questions, let me know. But I also have updated Shmup Arch to kind of tweak in some of the settings now that I have G-Sync and know fully how the implications are. So if you just download Shmup Arch and run it, it is ready to go. You don't have to do anything. These settings shouldn't affect non-G-Sync users either. It's just kind of, um, yeah, I went in and kind of tweaked everything. So thanks so much for watching and checking this out. And let me thank my patrons. Dingo, Anthony A, Ben Nguyen, Brian Shiver, Double Vision, Depths 20XX, Dunpill 2064, EC2151, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Gus, Kiwi, Jake Ryan, Joe Angelo, John, Game Boy Guru, K, Quentin, Malaise, Mark Sloan, Maz, Meher Kalendrian, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Daggers, Okla Kugels, Umkal, Parlar, Rhysosis, Sarah Thumbs, Sent Marap, Tsukumo, Turupan, Young Mai Sui, and Yutakaya, and Plasmo. Thanks for watching.